What is up, Internet world, and welcome to Accelerate. I'm Mike, he's Ian, and today we bring the all new Lincoln Nautilus. We want to give a big shout out to Courtesy Ford Lincoln for letting us have this 2024 Lincoln Nautilus. Big news out of Lincoln with the all new Lincoln Nautilus. In its third generation, it shares the same revised platform as the Ford Escape, the Bronco Sport, and the Maverick. Now it's a big deal that we have this vehicle here in our studio because the last Lincoln Nautilus we filmed killed it on YouTube. Also, we're going to be one of the first ones to give you our entire opinion about it. So if you know nothing about the Lincoln lineup, this Nautilus is slightly smaller than the Aviator and larger than the Corsair. And if you don't know Lincoln whatsoever, let me give you some other brands for reference. It competes against the Cadillac X-T5, the Benz GLE, the BMW X5, the Genesis GV80, the Cayenne, and even the Lexus RX. And for those that know Lincoln product, you will know that this used to be built on a Ford Edge platform. When you think Nautilus, you think Ford Edge, but no more. They don't make the Edge anymore. And they don't build this in Oakville, Ontario, which is about an hour down the street from us. That is being retooled to produce electric cars in late 2024. This is built at the Hangzhou assembly plant in China. So let's talk about pricing. With the Lincoln Nautilus, you have three different trim levels you can buy. First up is Premier, then you have the Reserve, and then you have the Black Label. And in each of those trims, you have packages you can buy. Now the cool part is you can add the hybrid to any of these for a price of about $1,500. So let's get right into it. Two engines are available in this all new Nautilus. Both are two liter, four banger turbocharged. One is non-hybrid, the other is hybrid. The non-hybrid, so the base engine, makes 250 horsepower and 275 pound-feet of torque. When you opt for the hybrid engine, you get a combined power of 310 horsepower. And they no longer have the V6 that makes 330 horsepower, that has been dropped. This is the most power you can get in the new Nautilus, and that is 310 horsepower. So when you opt for the base motor, you get an eight-speed automatic transmission, whereas when you get this, the hybrid, you get a CVT or continuous variable transmission. You see, most people don't like CVTs because usually it doesn't have enough power. They're usually on very economical cars, but vehicles that have over 300 horsepower that have CVT are actually pretty good because you don't really need to feel the gears shift. It's just very smooth, and that's exactly what this is. And it sort of blends very, very well with the suspension, which is what we're gonna talk about now. It's very lofty. There's nothing about this that feels sporty whatsoever, and most vehicles in its class are sporty. Take the X5, take even the old Ford Edge, it felt a bit more sporty than this. This is just lofty in every way. The steering is slow to react. I don't mean it in a bad way. I mean in a sense that it can't be fast because if it's fast, it's jerky and it's sporty and aggressive. But this is not. This is completely the opposite. So we're not doing a zero to 60, but I wanna show you guys how this thing is in terms of acceleration. So I'm doing about 30 miles an hour here and I'll pin it and let's feel it out here. And I'm at 60, so there we go. It's fair, is it a bullet? Definitely not. Is it fast enough? Fair, I wouldn't say it's... Uh, uh, I would say if you fill up this vehicle with humans and put all kinds of stuff in it, it's probably not gonna be fast enough to be passing tons of stuff, especially because everything nowadays has like 200 horsepower and up. It's fair, I wouldn't say it's great. You wanna see something cool? Dope. Sick. The all new Lincoln Nautilus. 
all about the front end. Look at this design. It's like wings on a bird. Take a look, you have this light bar that goes from end all the way to the other side, gives this really wide stance. The illuminated Lincoln badge in the center is dope. Anyways, let's hit that unlock button again, maybe it'll do it. There it goes again, one more time for good luck. How cool is that? So you have adaptive headlights in the front. You've got this stamp design, it has two bumps to give this aggressive look as opposed to just being completely flat. Moving down from there, you've got this massive radar on the front because this one does have blue crews. And then on the bottom here, you have the same gray color that you have on these little bump outs on the grill. So this all new Nautilus is 3.2 inches longer 1.1 inches wider and two inches taller than the old generation. It is available in seven different exterior body colors, starting off with the red carpet, then the diamond red, the blue panther, white platinum, lustrous gray, lustrous, silver radiance, and infinite black. This one does have the jet appearance package, which gives it a two tone look and a bunch of black accents and high gloss black wheels. You can get 19, 21s and 22 inch wheels depending on the model and trim you get. These are 22s. They also have carpeted inner fender liners on the front as well as the back. But the strangest, coolest, most unique piece of this Nautilus on the side is definitely these door handles. They stick out in this weird shape. It's just the strangest thing, but it's actually kind of cool, just different. It doesn't have a pulley thing. It actually has rubberized clickies behind this plastic panel. You press it and the doors open. Now, it'd be interesting to see how this actually lasts in the wintertime when you have a ton of snow building up on this ledge. So we'll see where that goes. Again, these just hit the market. So really there's no sort of testing or theory behind what I just said, but it's interesting that they've gone with this design. So if you guys like this design, let me know in the comments below. It's super unique. I do love the way this new Nautilus looks. The old one was just a bit too like domestic rounded. This has some funkiness to it, has some flair. Yeah, that sounds all great and stuff, but uh, what are the lease rates on this thing? What are my payments gonna be? What are my payments? Do I get 0% interest? What's the deal? And as we move down the side where this Nautilus trim piece is, you see the gray accents that you saw on the front. A lot of black on the bottom, but also gray right on this little strip. So there are any these gray pieces that you can't really see from your perspective, but from mine up close, you can definitely see the difference between the black and the gray. You have black trim on the top, as well as the side to give that two-tone split, and then you have more gray when it comes to this roof rail. And check this out on the back here. This is a nice small detail that they put. I thought at first this would illuminate. It doesn't, but it's cool that they have it, and maybe in the future it will illuminate. Now, back to this bird theme that they're doing from the front. On the back, you can see how it's sliding downward, whereas on the front, it's sliding upward. So if the battery on your key fob is dead, there are three ways to get inside your Lincoln. First one is through the phone, like I showed you guys earlier. Second one is this. So now I know this looks like a Ford key, but it's Lincoln actually. I push this, I pull it out, and this is the actual key. I put the key in this little tiny hole, I turn it, and it unlocks, and I can get inside my vehicle. And then the third way is this. If you're not used to Ford or Lincoln product, you can have a code you can put in, you press the bunch of numbers, and then you can get inside your car. Pretty cool. So let's talk about the back aesthetically. Starting at the top here, you have this clear third brake light. As you can see, there is no rear wiper. It is tucked right in there that I absolutely love. A lot of manufacturers have it here, but in Canada with the snow, just a lot of snow builds up here and this usually kind of breaks over time. The other thing I love about it, there's no badging whatsoever. Like there's no badging at all. None of these stickers, the stamps, nada. Even the Lincoln badge is hiding. Look at that, right under the brake light, all the way across Lincoln. And then there is this end-to-end -end rear light bar. Love it, very clean, elegant, thumbs up Lincoln. Moving down from there, you have the rear view camera that's built in. It's not after the fact. They didn't think about this and put, hey, let's put a rear camera just stuck over here. This is integrated in this panel underneath. I like that. And moving down from there, it gets very Audi-esque. This rear reverse light, this trim piece down here, these Parktronics, very Audi-like. And if you're wondering what it tows, it actually doesn't really tow much when you have the hybrid option. When you get the all gas version, 
you can tow 1,750 pounds, which people are probably going to complain about. When they buy a mid-size SUV, they want to tow something around 3,000 pounds, at least two jet skis or one 1,300 jet ski. All right, domestic lovers, here we are. The moment we've been waiting for, the interior of the Lincoln Nautilus. You've got 48 inches of screen from end to end, 48 inches. You have an 11.1 touchscreen display for everybody else. You have three digital scents, which is in here. And when I say sense, I mean smelling sense. You have to actually insert this little cartridge into the bottom of this armrest and it shoots out the scents right from these little holes. Pretty cool. You have ambient lighting that shows up on two places in the door panel. At the top here, where you have this crystal-like design and where you'd put drinks on the bottom. And then it's under my feet as well. So you have different choices of color. You also have this flat bottom steering wheel that's flat on the bottom and flat on the top. You have 14 speakers on this Revel Audio. Another small touch that I really like on this Lincoln is this trim they've used. It's like, has this lined effect, it has bronze in it, and then they've used the same color as stitching. That is a nice touch Lincoln. And I'm not saying that because I'm trying to be all salesy about it, but if you actually see one and look at what I'm talking about, it is very, very premium. But let's get back to these seats. They are very nice. They have three different materials in them. They have the perforations down the center, and it's not just one perforation across the board. You actually have a wider one, then a thinner one, then a wider one to give it this design element. So just a little bit of thought process behind it. Then you have leather on the side, and then suede that cuts across the seat. So they spent some time in curating how the seat looks. You do have three memory seats. You can fold your mirrors in and of course you have automatic windows on all four corners. You have this unique way to open up the door. It has this little toggle that you pull back and then the door opens up. And when the door does open up, of course you get the typical Ford chime, but you have now red ambient lighting here. So when there's vehicles coming, of course they'll see this red and they'll be like, whoa, 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 let me pull up the brakes and now it goes away and back to blue, which is what the color it was initially. There is no heads up display on this guy because you have this huge dash in front of you that says zero on it. So they've kind of substituted the heads up display for this digital display in front of me in the 48 inches that you have. And moving across and down from this 11.1 inch touchscreen, you have two vents, all your different shifters down here. Remember, there's no actual shifter on the mount here or the steering mount here or down here. It's all done by buttons. So park, reverse, neutral, drive, and low gear, all done by buttons. Then you have this guy here. When I push down on it, this is for start and stop. Then you have your front defrost, your cameras, and then your different drive modes by pushing this button down is what I assume because it does nothing else. Oh, there we go. Normal, conserve, excite, slippery, and deep conditions. Voila, those are your drive modes by hitting this button here. Then you have something that's very reminiscent of what Genesis uses, where you have this little crystal where your volume knob is. And moving along, we have a wireless charger, two big cup holders, a USB and a USB-C with a little bit of lighting. And if you wanna get rid of all that, you can use this little panel to cover it all. Very premium, even the way it closes, listen, solid. There's no piano black, no finger marking anywhere with the exception of the screen. And then up here again, this is for your smells. How much room do you have in this center armrest? Well, you have a decent amount to fit this guy upright and about three of them. Then you have more USBs, but they're not USB regular. They're two USB-Cs and a cigarette plug all underneath there. How does this feel in your arm? Well, it's pretty decent, has enough padding. It's not super soft, but enough to not give your elbow an ache after about two hours of driving. So let's get into this 11.1 inch screen. And the first thing I wanna talk about is how this screen impacts the 48 inch display. So you can customize your display by dragging and dropping. So I'm gonna drop the weather in right in the middle and you can see how that illuminates. Boom, drop the weather. It says share location for weather. I say yes while using the app, pretty straightforward stuff. It's all Google integrated. So that should pop up now. It says enable location sharing on touchscreen. So I did that. There you can see the weather on the 48 inch display. 
So getting back to the screen now, on the bottom is how you control all your HVAC controls. When I hit the seat button and steering wheel, you have one increment of heated steering wheel and three increments of cooled and heated seats on both left and right sides. So let's get back to the home screen. And when I hit the home button here, you can see the map, you have your phone and the radio station you're listening to. Then the next one up is the vehicle one where you can adjust your drive modes, ambient lighting, traction control, digital scent, valet, vehicle status, and settings. So let's hit drive modes for a second by hitting it on the display as opposed to hitting this button down. You've got normal, conserve, excite, slippery, and deep conditions. Then next up I have ambient lighting. This is where you can pick your seven different colors and you can adjust the brightness of it in the different areas that it does work. Then from there, you have your digital scent. Again, it is not activated. There are three cartridges. It is not set up at the moment. It is in that packaging. It's a new car, so I'm not gonna open it up. I'll let the new owner do that for himself. Then you have valley mode vehicle status, all pretty typical stuff. And if you want to open up the trunk, I can hold this button here and the trunk will open. Boom. It shows a nice display of a Lincoln Nautilus in the wrong color. <clears throat> Wow, that's very orchestra-like, Lincoln. But the feature people are gonna use the most are these six little buttons, which is a third one down. It gives you your profile, basically, which is your Google Maps, Google Assistant, your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, the news, and of course, YouTube. And that is where you're gonna subscribe if you guys don't mind. We're almost at 250,000 subs, and we'd love to make it a quarter million on our race to a million subs. So that's it for the display, but I wanna show you one last thing, and that's the calm button. When I hit this calm button, it gets rid of everything on the passenger side, it minimizes the driver's display, and makes everything calm for me while I'm driving. Back seat of the Lincoln Nautilus. First things first, I wanna talk about charging and communication when you're in the back as a child. You have one, two, three, four, four USB-Cs, to charge your devices. When I'm sitting back here, I can recline my seat all the way back and I have different increments. Not that you'd use them, but you can recline it slightly, not so slightly, and then, you know, 90 degrees, like typical. So I will recline back to full jam here. These seats are very comfortable. They have the suede on the sides. You've got the gold stitching and then, of course, perforations down the center. If you're wondering where to put your drinks, you fold this down and you have the drinks right here. Two cup holders and some storage right there. When I fold this back, how about the arm situation? Nice and soft. Obviously you have plastic here, but you're not gonna put your elbow here. Your elbow is gonna be back here when you're reclined and enjoying life. You do have two vents in the center. You have three increments of heated seats on left and right. And then underneath you do have a full out plug that has 150 watts of jam. That's a three prong plug. And if you're wondering, can you put these seats backwards and forwards? Yes, you can. You can slide them to give yourself less room and more trunk room. And if you have a magazine or an iPad you wanna store, well, you can store it right behind either seat on the passenger side as well as the driver's side. Some vehicles only have it available on the passenger side, but in this specific case, you get them on both sides. And as far as storage everywhere else, well, the door is a little bit shy when it comes to storage, but it's deep when you go back into it so you can put a bottle there. So let's show you how much room there is in the rear of this Lincoln Nautilus. It says Nautilus right here, pretty cool touch Lincoln. So let's see how much depth we have. We have about 41 inches right to the edge. And as far as width goes, we have 44. And as far as height goes, important to note, what kind of height are we getting? We're getting just about 29 and a half inches. So good size as far as the trunk goes on this Nautilus. How about underneath this panel? You have a full size spare and some compartments for storage. On the left and right, you also do have some cutouts or bulge ins, I guess you can call them, on either side. Some D-rings, two of them on each side. And then this, a cigarette plug that you can plug in stuff to charge. And then one and two, that folds down your second row. So that's a good feature to have, as opposed to having to go on either side and fold the seats down. What do you think? So I wanna show you guys how this Lincoln app works. Pretty straightforward, simple front sort of screen that I have interface here. Hold this button down, I gotta hold it. And then it does one of these like circular things and then it gives me this fancy animation on the back. Voila. 
And if I want to start it, I hit this button. Now it is a hybrid, so when I hit it, it's just going to have the hybrid stuff on. It's not going to start, nor do I want to start it in here. But I hold the start button down, it does so. And then if I want to lock it, I hold this button down, and it does the circular thing again, like it's syncing, and then it does the closing of everything. Boom de boom, it is locked. Now, you have a few other options with this app. One, when I hit vehicle, it tells me how much distance I have to empty, and then it has a scheduled start, and then of course, like a Wi Fi hotspot and all that stuff. And then, of course, when you want to service it, it's all pretty much straightforward in there. But you also have a map telling you exactly where the vehicle is, like a full out Google map, which is pretty cool to have on your phone. So, let's talk about the screen glare. It is not bad whatsoever. I guess when the sun's coming from that side, this side has shadows so you can see it clearly, and this side has a slight bit of glare. And then if the sun's coming from that direction, well, this is gonna be clear and that's gonna have a bit of glare. So one way or another, you're gonna get a bit of glare from either or, but right now as it's shadowed, it's perfectly clear. They have done a good job with it. It's nice and big, very basic design, I guess, because they don't have so many things and you're just confused on what you're looking at. Now, it's something interesting with these door handles. When I'm looking at my side mirrors, you can see them flare out and pop out. It's just very funny to look at. But if they weren't there and it was just a clean piece of trim, this looks exactly like a Range Rover Velar. Identical, like this is like identical. When I'm looking at this rear view mirror, I'm like, wow, this is, am I a Range Rover Velar? Cause it looks this way. I'm sure you guys wanna know what the fuel mileage is of this new Nautilus but this is a brand new vehicle. It has less than 35 miles on it. I think it has about 39 right now. And on averaging 10.7, 10.8 liters per hundred kilometers, just the way we've been driving and testing out this vehicle, which is pretty decent. Um, this is the hybrid again. So if the question is, should I spend the money on the hybrid and spend that extra $1,500 in the US and about 3,500 in Canada? The answer is in Canada, you get more equipment than you do in the US, but, what is the future of how you're gonna drive these vehicles? Are you allowed to use the HOV lane if you have a hybrid or not? Those are sort of questions you need to ask yourself because sometimes it's just spending the money just to be able to use that lane. And also, do you sit in traffic a lot? If you sit in traffic a lot, it does make sense to get the hybrid. So when you get to customize your display, you can customize your trip computer specifically for this trip or your average trips since you've owned the car. You can all place it up there. So right now I've placed this trip and you can see at the bottom, there's four different numbers essentially. The first one is the trip you've done, the distance, the next one is the average fuel consumption, the next one is the time you've been driving the vehicle, and the last one is how much distance you've traveled on electric only. And that's a cool number to see because you want to maximize that by looking at it. So right now I've done about six kilometers, we're in Canada, so six kilometers of distance in electric only um, on, you know, out of 19 kilometers. So I've done about, uh, if my math serves me correctly, 20 minus six is 14. So 14 on gas and six on electric. So pretty cool. So since this was a brand new vehicle, we didn't want to put too many kilometers on it, but during our drive test, we ended up getting 9.3 liters per hundred kilometers or 25 miles per gallon. This is pretty good considering it was a lot of country driving and cars tend to be less efficient when they're brand new. Now you should be able to get 7.8 liters per hundred kilometers or 30 miles per gallon with this hybrid system. If you don't get the hybrid, you should get around 25 four miles per gallon or 9.8 liters per hundred kilometers combined. And if you're looking to compare that against what we think would be its direct competitor, the Lexus RX, the 350H, the Lexus does manage to get better fuel economy at six and a half liters per hundred kilometers or 36 miles per gallon. Now, when you drive one of these Nautiluses, you're gonna figure out that it's front wheel drive bias because when you go around the corner and you pin it, the front wheels do have a little bit of slippage. And then there's a the steering wheel. This steering wheel is odd. It's two flat bottom steering wheels up and down. Um, you see, I'm used to the Plaid, and the Plaid has kind of the same sort of vibe. It's kind of long, elongated, and you can kind of put your hands like this. That was definitely a lot more luxurious. But if you're used to a full round steering wheel, this is just gonna feel a bit odd for you at, at first glance, or at first feel. Um, the heated steering wheel button works very well. It gets very hot, including these seats. So the heating part works well. It's just, are you gonna be okay with the way the steering wheel is holding like this or holding it like this? Cause you're not gonna hold like a sports car. You kind of probably do one of these where your elbow's parked on this side, on this ledge, and your other hand's gonna be doing one of this with your coffee in your hand. That's generally how you'd be holding the steering wheel. Another interesting point is this has 22s and you can get 19s. So if you get 19s, imagine how soft this is going to be. It's gonna be a very soft, bubbly vehicle. It's already bubbly, but oh, I also want to talk about this. This is something interesting I didn't talk about. I did this in the studio and I was like, man, I got to bring this up on the drive. 
just check this out. I take the steering wheel and I can have one, one finger here and I can spin it. Like, look at this. Like, it is pretty cool that you can do this. It's got a very light steering wheel. Now I'm putting some effort behind this, but this is not normal. Like, people say this is like dry steering to death, and it is, but it's, it's, uh, there's so much assistance with the steering wheel that that's why when you're driving it at anything over about 60 or 70 miles an hour, it doesn't feel as connected as you want it to be from an enthusiast perspective. I think if you just want to bubble down the highway and stay between the lanes, it's going to do its job, and that's exactly what it's probably designed to do. So, hope you guys like this review on this 2024 Lincoln Nautilus. It's got a lot of tech, so there's going to be a lot of questions about reliability and how long these screens last, especially when we're throwing our TVs out every four years in today's world. So hopefully these screens will last 10 years at the minimum. And if not, well, hey, you can always lease one of these bad boys. So thanks again to courtesy Ford Lincoln for loaning us this 2024 Lincoln Nautilus. We'll catch you on the next one.